Hi everyone, Gem here and welcome to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. It's been a while since we've done some watercolouring so today we're going to head back to Ticket to Dreams by Karolina Kubikowska and I'm going to finish off the opposite page from the one we had done previously. Just before we jump into it though, I would like to ask you if you haven't already to go over to my recent Coffee Fund video and make a suggestion for what you would like the Coffee Fund to be spent on. If you scroll down through the comments underneath the video, see if someone else has made the suggestion you were thinking of and hit a like beside their comment. And if no one has been as creative as you, stick your comment in and let me know what you would like to see the next video on with your money. When we have a decent amount of suggestions and a decent amount of likes on the suggestions, I'll make a short list and then you guys get to vote. So I will leave a link to that video in the card. I'll also leave it in the end card as well so you can watch it after you've watched this. And it'll also be in the description for you as well so there's no excuse for you not to do it. Anyway, let's head to Top Down View and we can get going. <laughs> Okay, so here is the page that we had started on previously and some of you said you would quite like to see me do the other side. So this is what we're going to tackle today. I'm just going to fold this over and give us a bit more space. So what I did want you to be able to see uh, are my, like, my mixing palettes. So I'm just going to pop those there. Also as well, some of you had asked about like the, my kind of like my setup when I'm painting with watercolour. So I always have my paint palette up here and my mixing palettes here. I use ceramic ones because it's easier to mix watercolour on them. They're not ideal if you're travelling about, but if, like me, you spend a lot of time at home, um, they're, they're much, much easier to mix your watercolour paint in, but they're quite heavy. Um, you know, this is solid, so it's not ideal to be lugging about with you. I also always have two pots of water, and what I do is I use this plastic one to clean my brushes in, and I use this little glass one for fresh water to mix paint and um, that sort of thing. The other thing that I also keep is a separate brush for mixing colours. Now this brush is nothing special. This came in one of the multi-packs of gelatos that I have and uh, it's got this sort of slightly angled top on it and I use this to mix my colours and it just basically means that my actual brushes that I use to paint with are kept a bit sort of cleaner. And th these little brushes are absolutely fab. This has done well so far. So that's kind of what I use. I've also got uh, my two Cotman brushes here, which I'm sort of quite attached to just now. I go through phases with paint brushes, but I seem to use these all the time. And this is a, a number eight round, the one with the rainbow tape on it, and a number six round as well. The reason I've got the tape on this is that the, the coating on the actual paintbrush itself started to split and peel off down here. So I've just covered it up because I don't want that getting caught in my finger or worse, dropping into my paintings. So I have an idea in my head of the rough sort of colour scheme that I wanted to use and it's going to involve mixing some colours which I thought I would talk a little bit more about in this video because I really didn't talk about it much previously. So using my little mixing brush and the other thing I always keep which is my pipette. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to use this little sort of flower shaped palette first because I, I don't know I just kind of like it. So I just um, like to put a couple of drops of clean water into one of the of the divots so to speak. Divots? Palette? I don't know what you want to call them. I'm not really technical stuff like that. And what I want to do is try and mix a sort of peachy skin colour for this part because the, the, there are there are a set of eyes here so I'm thinking a skin colour but we've got to remember that this is part of either a moth looks like a moth because it's got a big hairy body so that's the kind of idea that we're going to go for so the first thing I want to do is get some colour mixing on the go so the first thing I want to do is mix this sort of uh, like a light-ish peachy skin tone so I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre and just pop that in with my water and I'm going to use that as a base to work from. So I'm just making sure that in between mixing colours that I'm, uh, that I'm cleaning off this brush, make sure there's no residue on it. So I'll take a little bit of yellow ochre and I'm also going to take a tiny bit of cadmium red hue and just pop that in and start working from there. Now that already is looking to me like sort of what I'm looking for. So that was lucky. <laughs> but I need to mix up a bit more of it because we've got a considerable area to cover. So... I'm just adding in more of that cadmium red hue. Now, I would just like to point out at this juncture, I know it goes without saying, but I am not experienced in the slightest when it comes to mixing watercolour paint. 
I am still a, a relative novice to this sort of thing. So uh, do not take any of this as gospel, but I'm just uh, just going with uh, what, what seems to work. So I'm just adding in a bit more of this yellow ochre. And when you're mixing colours like this, it's always a good idea to have a scrap of watercolour paper and it's just so that you can test these out before you start whacking them down on your artwork and or your colouring page. So that's still quite orangey. It's nearly where I wanted it to be. Nearly, but not quite. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of pink into it now and see what happens. I still want it to be reasonably vibrant. So that's looking okay. You've got to remember as well that it will dry a, a, you know, a, a lighter colour than, than what you're actually putting down. So you do have to take that into consideration. So this is pretty close actually. The colour that I've got, I'm just going to have like a lesser dilution of it. So I'm going to pop some more water in here. And again, it is literally just a couple of drops. And using my pipette, I'm going to suck up some of this. And I'm going to pop it over. Just again, make sure that I'm cleaning my pipette out and my water properly because I don't want any sort of cross contamination. So that is going to be a lesser dilution. So if I do this, you can see how pale that is there. And then if I dip into the other one, you can see that's much richer. So that'll allow me to put in some highlights and shadows. That's the, the kind of thinking behind that. So let's get started. So I'm going to use my larger brush. I'm going to use my 0 0.8, my 0.8, my size 8 brush. Too, too used to using liners, fine liners. I can't speak today, I don't know what's going on. So make sure I've got a nice clean brush and I'm going to pick up this watered down idea. Now bearing in mind we are working in a colouring book, you want to keep the water to a minimum. This colouring book in particular does take watercolour very well, but still it's not really designed for this. So it's important that you try and sort of keep that to a minimum because the, the paper will buckle. Now, if you remember from last time, if you haven't seen the last video, I will link it in the end card and also in the description for you. But this paper sucks up the paint really quickly. So if you want to get some nice smooth colour, you do have to work quite quickly. Otherwise, you'll get these watermarks. Now, obviously, in this part here, that was intentional. But when we're working on something like this, you may not want that to happen. So as long as you get a shimmy on, you can cover all the areas that you need to cover reasonably quickly then it should be relatively smooth. I always like a little bit of texture in what I'm doing because I, I don't really like sort of flat smooth colour. I just think it's, um, it's a bit boring. <laughs> so that's a great place to start. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this other wing as well. And again, I'm working right to left because I am left-handed. If you are of the opposite persuasion, then the opposite way around is the way forward for you. There's something really satisfying about water colouring in a colouring book because it's very quick compared to using pencils and you can get a, an equally detailed and interesting finish to the picture, uh, you know, in like half the time. So if you're like me and you're a really busy person, that's really, really helpful. <laughs> it's actually really nice. So I'm going to leave that to dry and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this slightly... Um, odd blue colour and I can't tell you what I've actually done to mix this. When I am finished watercolour painting I quite often just leave the paint in the palette if it's colours that I've mixed and what happens is it dries up and I can touch that and you can see there's nothing on my finger and you can reconstitute it so you can actually save it for a later time and I do it all the time. What I do do is though I either cover the palette in cling film once it, once I know that it's dry, don't do it when it's wet, Um. And either that or I put it in a container or sealed somewhere and it's so that dust doesn't settle down on top of it. Now in the cave, obviously having dogs, we have a lot of dog hair and things that float about. So that just protects it and it means when you reconstitute it, you don't have bits sort of floating about in it and then you know you're painting them onto your picture. So I'm just going to pop some water in here and I'm just going to let that sort of slosh about for a minute and come to life again. Now this green that I had mixed as well, this is a combination of sap green and hookers green light. So I'm going to do the same with it as well because we may use that for some foliage or I may augment it and make it a little bit darker. I haven't really decided. So I'm just going to let that sort of slosh about. Now you can see there that that started to break up in the, the blue section of the palette. I'm going to move this water so that my hand's not stretching in front of the camera all the time. That must be really annoying for you guys. 
just move my water over here. This uh, this needed eraser that you can see here, this is actually preventing this white part, which is my paint palette from sliding. It's a really stupid design in the Winsor Newton Cotman palette, but it's actually got a curved bottom on it. And when you've got it on a smooth surface, it slides about the minute you pop your paintbrush in one of the pans. So that's just there to stop it sliding about. So ever, ever resourceful. <laughs> okay, so if I start mixing this now, and just give it a minute, you will see that it is magically starting to return to what looks a little bit more like watercolour, which is really great. And all those little bitty bits are sort of starting to dissolve again, which is nice. Now, it's quite an interesting colour. It's been a while since I've used this. I haven't done any watercolouring for maybe two, two weeks, maybe even longer than that. So what I want to do is just have a little go in my scrap piece of paper just to see what the situation is and it's a very sort of moody indigo-y type blue and what I want to do is I think I want to make that just a little bit more vibrant so I've got a lovely uh, cerulean or cerulean I don't know how you want to pronounce it um, I say cerulean blue and that's a, a quite a nice sort of light jolly blue so I'm going to pop some of that in just to lighten it up a little bit and you can see that's changed the composition of it straight away and we can test it out again. And you can see that's looking not not quite as, there's not as many sort of grey undertones to it. And if I just let that dry as well, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. One thing I've learned about watercolouring is you have to be really patient. Something I'm not that great at, to be perfectly honest. I'm not a particularly patient person. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, it, that's definitely been a huge learning curve for me. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go to my number six round now and just start adding in a little bit of detail into these wings. So I'm going back to the same colour I was using before and I'm just essentially going to put down some more layers, but I'm being very selective as to where I do it. So what I'm aiming for here is the hatched areas that Carolina has left for us. And I've said this before, but that's usually, you know, that's the, the artist helping you out in terms of shading and highlights so where there's heavily hatched areas like this you know that that's meant to be a shadow so you can make that a little bit darker now just by layering the same watercolor you're going to get that effect and it's going to be quite subtle and again that's one of the things i really like about watercolor is this ability to layer now if i just add a tiny bit of water to my brush i can then sort of start to spread that out a little bit just round the outside of where I'd laid down that initial bit of colour. And I kind of want a line here. I want that to almost be defined, I think. And then we've got this, this part here. And down into the, the sort of crease of the eyelid. And we'll start up here as well. I should really have done this side first. I'm getting better at not putting my hand in things as well. I think I must, you know, just with a bit of practice, I've become a bit more aware so I don't have to work right to left all the time because I seem to be able to be slightly more careful than previously. And I don't know whether it's because I'm not having to concentrate as hard on what I'm actually painting. You know, I've got a bit of sort of peripheral awareness perhaps um, just because I've, you know, I've done a little bit more painting now. That might be the reason. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Well, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. I find this is a really good way just to be expressive as well because you can be a bit looser and more free than you can with pencils and uh, there's something quite sort of liberating about that I like it and I seem to be less particular about having you know lines or you know parts that maybe aren't as light or as dark as others whereas with pencil I feel as if I'm like a bit more meticulous. Okay for these inner areas I've just realized I'm looking at these bottom eyelids here and I'm not happy with that I think this should be the, the same colour. Just pop a little bit of that in there and the same with this one. What I want to do now is I want to go back to my bigger brush and I'm going to take this darker colour here and I just want to use that on the bottom part of this. You know, it looks more like an orange rather than a skin tone, but we do have to wait and see once it dries because if you remember on the previous page, the, the sort of orange colour I mixed ended up being like a coral colour, uh, just the way that it dried. And it was it was actually quite nice, it worked out quite well, but it was interesting because when we saw the paint to begin with, it looked really orange and it ended up being not very orange. 
Again, I'm not really taking much care because I don't need to. And I just want to... Right, so while that's drying, now we can go back to our, our other colours here. So I'll, I'll have a look at the green. This is a, a point where Mr. Jem would say, meanwhile, back at the back cave. <laughs> and let's just mix this green up and get it looking a bit more, a bit more like paint again. That looks pretty good to me. There isn't an awful lot of paint here and that's one of the things I think is quite a big learning curve. When it, when you start to watercolour, you the tendency is to mix the paint and you don't mix as much as you actually need. So it's important that you, you kind of go a little bit overboard. Um, you know, what you think is going to be enough, just add a little bit more and give yourself that little bit more. Watercolour paint in general is very economical, so you're not there, you know, you're not really wasting a lot of the actual pigment. Um, and there's nothing worse than having mixed a colour and then not having enough of it because when you go to try and mix a fresh batch, you find it very difficult to match exactly what you had before. And I found that a couple of times. That is the voice of experience speaking people. Um so yeah, it's important that you just go that little bit further. So this is just a sap green and unsurprisingly it is the most used colour in my palette, closely followed by indigo. And uh, I actually almost have a hole in the pan now. Um, for someone that's been painting not very long, I think that's quite impressive. It is my favourite colour. Um, and I use it all the time. I use it, but I paint a lot of trees and things, so that kind of makes sense too. And all I'm doing next is grabbing a little bit of the Hooker's Green Light, which also has a reasonable dent in it. <laughs> Again, not unsurprisingly, creature of habit. And I'm just going to plop a little bit of that in. There we go. That, see, that's given it a bit of a richer colour. It's still a very vibrant colour though, which I really like. Leaves don't have to be boring shades of green. There is a shade called Viridian Hue, which is awesome. And it's it's a sort of, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a teal stroke. but It's like a, a sort of slightly bluey emerald colour. It's amazing. It doesn't have a lot of practical applications, though, realistically. But one of these days, I'm going to paint a whole picture just in Viridian Hue, just for fun. Just because I can. Right, so I'm back to my number eight brush here. And I'm just going to start on some of this foliage down here. So I'll take a little bit of my paint and make sure that I'm keeping it to a minimum. And I can just start going at... Now you can see that is quite a vibrant colour. I like it a lot. Try and do these edges first. Now when I'm working on things like leaves, again, I'm, I'm really not interested in having a, you know, a flat sort of wash of colour. I want that little bit of interest just to you know give the leaves a bit of texture it just makes things that a little bit more interesting i've missed out an entire section of the background there i'm going to cheat a little bit i'm going to make that a leaf no one will ever know no one will notice she says hopefully but like to be resourceful what can i say i'll just mix this up the hatching's quite heavy here so i don't have to worry too much about making the paint go all the way in because the, the paint does lie on top of the the black parts of the image, obviously, because that's ink that's on them. And it sort of leaves a funny stain. Leaves, get it? Ah! <laughs> oh God, I'm full of it today. So yeah, that's, you know, I do try and avoid those sections, but it's not the end of the world if I, you know, I end up sort of going over a little bit onto the, the heavier black areas. And I'm assuming that these little round things are supposed to be water droplets. So I'm going to circumnavigate them. Do, 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 just like this. For now. And I will come back to them. Oops, oh dear. Once these <laughs> once these leaf areas are dry. My handy isn't even that shaky today. I, I, can't, I can't even blame going over the lines on my on my hand because it's fine today. That's funny. So think of this as like your base layer of pencil. Obviously we're not gonna go too many layers on top for the aforementioned paper behaviour and type of paper, but you can um you can work you know, you can work on top of it a little bit and as long as you're not kind of scrubbing away at it and, and drenching the the paper. Now there's this sort of section in here that's sort of half hatched and half not. I am going to assume that it is the base of this plant because this creature has landed on the plant. So I'm going to make that green in there as well. And I may go over and darken some of that down in there. Um, Again, just go with the, this sort of base colour first. And I'll just 
shift this up a bit so you can see the bottom. I'll just sort of give this a little, a little squish in here, like so. I often do a lot of thinking about the YouTube channel when I'm in the shower and that's not meant to sound dodgy in any way, shape or form. It just seems to be a place that I'm quite contemplative. And one of the things I was thinking about the other day is I'd really like to get to a point with my water colouring. Now that I'm sure that I like it, and let's be realistic, that took a long time because <laughs> I really didn't like it to begin with. Um, I would like to get to a point where I'm confident enough with my water colouring to be able to do some tutorials for you guys. You know, if maybe if it's something that you fancy trying or, you know, it's just something that you're interested in. Uh, I would really like to get my skills to a level where I'd be able to do that. So that's something that I'm I've kind of, it's on the back burner. I have so many projects going on just now, it's untrue and I don't have enough time. But maybe in the future, once I feel I'm a little bit more proficient, um, it's something that I might do. So if that's something that you're interested in, please, uh, please let me know in the comments. Because obviously, if there is interest generated from you guys, it's something that's much more likely to happen. I just felt that the... The, the tutorial, the magazine tutorial I followed when, well, the first time I, I tried watercolours, I felt really out of my depth and I really didn't feel as if it was a beginner's tutorial. And uh, people still tell me that that's one of their favourite videos because I, you know, I'm at the point where I'm using naughty words and <laughs> I get really frustrated and I'm clearly not comfortable with what's going on at all. Uh, so I feel as if it's something, I don't feel as if it's something I need to remedy because everybody's different but I just think that it's something, having been in that position and basically been in a state of panic throughout the entire thing that I could come up with some quite user friendly, you know like beginner friendly paintings and things to do because so far and again not that I'm very far along in terms of my skill level with watercolour but I, I, I have like a, a sort of two styles that I paint in and one of them is really simplistic and it seems to generate quite quite nice paintings and it's something that I think I could pass on and you know most people would be able to have a go and make a reasonable job at so you know it would be good for beginners to get that sort of sense of satisfaction as well I think anyway. Um, that's just my thoughts if you want to add to those thoughts or you have any input that you would like to give me then by all means you know I'm always up for that and I really like reading your comments anyway so feel free so yeah that was just a little uh, a little brainwave that manifested in the shower <laughs> See, as they often do strangely it's usually then or when I'm walking the dogs, you know, if I'm outside, either if I'm running or I'm walking the dogs, that's quite often I get a lot of ideas when I'm, when I'm doing that. And I think it's just because I'm partially on autopilot. There we go, we're getting on quite well with these leaves now. This green's drying a really nice shade as well, I quite like it. Oh, that was a little bit too much paint there. I'm pretty sure that you guys won't be able to hear it. I've got the, the window open in the cave today. It's one of these really muggy close humid days um, and there's literally like no oxygen in the atmosphere so I've got the cave window open and the the boys are working with sheep in the yard which is it's not in front of the house it's just up the road from the house and all I can hear in the background is meh meh <laughs> these frantic sheep running about that's quite funny so I've really got I've got my fingers crossed that you can't hear it if you can I am going to try and edit it out um I'll do some tweaking with the with the, the sound section of this file, <laughs> see if I can't get rid of it because it is really annoying. <laughs> get some of this down round here. I'm trying to avoid these sort of little water droplet things. At first I thought they were berries, like the likes of this one's sitting quite high up, uh, but I've decided that berries don't tend to grow in leaves like that, do they? So they tend to grow in bunches or on stalks or both, so. We'll conclude that they're water droplets. That is open to interpretation, obviously. That's the, the best fun about art, as you can do whatever you like, and it's not wrong. I think I'll just keep these the same. Pop that in there. It's like a little rogue vine that's growing there, isn't it? Oh, there's another one here as well. Good grief. So you can see I'm running, rapidly running out of paint, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Thankfully, I have enough. My, my judgment was adequate this time. That doesn't happen very often when it comes to watercolour. <laughs> but there you go, da-da. 
So, I mean, you can see even in the, you know, the sort of 20 odd minutes that we've been doing this, we've actually covered quite a large amount of the picture. I'm going to take my smaller brush, which is again back to my size six round, and I'm going to have a have a do with this blue. Hey, that rhymes. And I'm just going to put a, a really small amount of paint in the iris here. Again, we're going to build this up. That does look really washed out on the monitor. It is a little bit bluer than that. I am going to have to give back this camera. The camera that I'm using is a borrowed camera. It's from a friend and uh, my friend needs it back. So we are going to have to make a purchase very soon. And it's something that I don't want to do because they're really expensive. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking into that just now. I'm just deciding what colour to do this sort of fuzzy part. And I think I'm going to go for like a brown colour. I've got a raw umber. I always like to start with just a, a you know, a base colour in the sort of region of where I want to go. And sometimes I just, I do just use them straight out of the palette. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. And some hoity-toity watercolour people say, oh, you can't use it straight out the palette because it's not, you know, that's not how you do it. Um, I don't care. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to take some raw umber. Every time I say umber now, it reminds me of uh, one of the bloopers uh, when I said umper, as in rhymes with jumper. And every time I say umber now, it's all I think about and it makes me kind of like laugh in my head. And <laughs> I just don't know why. It's just one of those things that kind of sticks in your head. I am working on... Well, I've started putting together the the next blooper reel, which is going to be available when we have a two and a half thousand subscriber celebration. Uh, they do take quite a bit of editing because obviously you're you're sort of chopping and fixing a lot of little clips and you're rolling them all into one. So although there, it's quite a short video or a short reel. Um, it takes quite a lot of editing so I've kind of started to do a little bit of that because all that happens is when I make a mistake I keep the entire file and I plonk it into a separate folder so that I know that's one that's got some something funny in it basically uh, and then I have to sit and go through and sort of you know trawl through all the videos to find the bits uh, so I kind of started doing that and that was what made me think of the umper <laughs> okay let's have a little go with this now Again, I just really want a kind of base coat just now. I kind of feel when I'm watercolouring uh, colouring pages, I feel like I just have to cover up all the white of the paper first and then I can go back and kind of refine areas. And it's, it's a combination of just it being aesthetically pleasing and feeling as if I'm making progress and the the sort of you know different areas drying that's just kind of the like my thought process that's not like a way to do it or whatever it's just that's the way my brain works okay so that's pretty that's looking pretty good i'm out of this dark sort of orangey color so what i'm going to do now is just in that same palette i'm going to put in some proper orange which uh, is cadmium red pale hue it's not red at all it's bloody orange if that's not orange, I don't know what is. Like, really, seriously, I do not know what is. <laughs> and in with that, I'm going to mix a tiny bit of burnt sienna. Not to be confused with burnt jumper. And it's to, to kind of darken it down a little bit and just make it a little bit richer and give it that slightly sort of brownish, reddish hue. Oh, yes, that looks quite nice. It's almost like a burnt orange. I suppose if you mix orange and burnt sienna, there is a chance you're going to get burnt orange. Let's be realistic. As I said, guys, I, I never profess to being professional or experienced. This is just the way we do things and this is how we learn. And if you don't do this, you'll never learn. Okay, so I'm going to test this out on my, my scrap. Now, interestingly, that's dried really dark. But I think that was quite a big blob that I'd put on there. So this is still looking pretty orangey. Hmm, okay. I might have to pop a little bit of actual red in there. I have a light red, which is like a brick red colour. Maybe we'll, we'll whack a bit of that in and see what happens. Hmm? Why not? And this is one of the pans in my watercolour set that just never gets used. Okay, that's looking pretty rich now. Okay, right, now we're winning. That's what we're after. Some of that's almost like a terracotta colour. There are, I mean, if you look at, even on YouTube, um, there are lots and lots of watercolour videos about mixing watercolour colours. And truthfully, it's something that I avoid because 
I kind of liken it to using GPS. If you don't know where you're going and you use satellite navigation to do it, you'll get there. That Absolutely, you will get there. If you were to go a second time and you had to do it without the sat-nav, you're going to struggle because you're too busy paying attention to the sat-nav and you're not actually absorbing your surroundings. You're not learning the route. You're just following instructions. I kind of feel this, that, that way about mixing colours. If you explore and find out yourself, you go through the thought process of making that colour and it makes it more likely to stick in your head than if you just blindly follow a recipe. Again, that's just my opinion, and uh, so yeah, I like to I like to find these things out by myself. It makes life much more interesting. So I'm just gonna plonk down that color, which is pretty vibrant, and I'm giving my brush a quick clean, and then I'm gonna pick up some clean water, take a little bit off the end, and then I'm just gonna start pulling this out with the same brush, because I do want this bottom part of the the wings. I'm really going to have to find out the name for this. I want them to be a lot darker than this top part. If anybody knows the, the scientific name for the bottom part of the wings, please tell me. If not, then I am going to look it up. And the next time I do anything remotely butterfly-esque, I will have the proper name for it. I say, I've said this in a few videos. Although my degree is in animal science, I deal mostly in quadrupeds. I don't deal in insects or birds. It's, it's mostly mammals. Did a little bit on chickens when I was at university, but I wasn't really all that excited about chickens, so I, did, I really didn't pay much attention at all. Oh, goodness me. Right, I'm going back to my size six and back to this original colour that we used on the top of the wings. And I just want to build up some of my, my layers here. You're better to use a little bit of paint and do multiple layers, I've found, than trying to whack down one great big you know, dark layer. And again, it's kind of like using pencil. You are better to use multiple layers and make them light because it gives you a lot more control over what you're doing. And it's back to what I always say, you can always add to it, but it makes it very difficult to take away. So same logic applies. And it's really nice. See when you can transfer skills and knowledge like that between mediums, it really may, it gives you a sense of achievement because you feel as if you've learned something and it makes you feel competent and a bit more confident in what you're doing. Uh, and especially, again, with watercolour, I, I really was absolutely, you know, a complete novice and I was not confident with it for so long. And it's only now that I'm starting to kind of like, yeah, okay. I did look back and I did my first watercolour at the end of January and this is July. So it's not even been a huge amount of time, but already, I mean, I've come on leaps and bounds. And as I say, it's... I was kind of reluctant to admit it at one point, but I actually quite enjoy it. <laughs> it's, it's very relaxing. The thing I don't like about it is having to pull out all the, you know, set the table up with the palettes and the rags and the paints. and the, It's a bit of a pest and it's not something I do if I've only got like half an hour to art. Righty-ho. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to let these wings dry and they can, you know, do their thing. I'm going to work on this body part now and I'm going to use this, this burnt umper umper jumper. I know it wasn't burnt umper, it was raw umper. <laughs> and I'm going to build on that by adding more paint to it. So I think in the interest, these are quite warm colours and that's quite a sort of, it looks quite cool in comparison. So I want to kind of warm it up a bit. And I've got uh, Van Dyke brown. Again, that's like one of the more common colours you would get in a palette. So I would like to just plop a little bit of Van Dyke in it and just to see what happens. And that's the great thing. You can sit and experiment like this and it's just a case of, well, oh, I wonder what happens if we do this. Again, this isn't a colour I use very often, the Van Dyke brown. I tend to plump for uh, the, the kind of more ready browns. Oh, it looks like chocolate. <laughs> okay, it really doesn't look like chocolate now. <laughs> It looked all like chocolate for a split second. That almost looks like pure Van Dyke brown, but not quite. So I want to take my smaller brush now because the, 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 you know, the lines that are here would indicate that he's, he's a fuzzy muzzy. So. And I just want to sort of see if I can kind of follow some of Carolina's lines. And then I think around this hatch in here, we'll make this a bit darker. And we'll let that dry and again, we'll come back to it. Now we've got to start thinking about these eyes. That's that's pretty dry now. Yeah, that's pretty dry. And I just want to make them that little bit more intense. So I'm going to grab my oh, my other palette. Excuse the arm. Pop it down here. I'm just trying to make sure as much is in camera shot as possible because we're kind of limited on 
how much room we've got. And I'm just gonna put one, two drops of water in there. And I am gonna take Pthalo Blue, or Pthalo. Pthalo, I think it's Pthalo. Pthalo. Make sure that my mixing brush is nice and clean. I do have a rag here as well, and I just kind of like, yeah, give it, give it a quick wipe. Get some fresh water. And I'll grab some of this Pthalo Blue. Oh, this is an outstanding colour. If you if you like really bright, vibrant, vibrant colours, then this is the this is the one for you. Turn it around so you can see. Is it better that way? There we go. Now I only need a tiny bit of paint here, so I'm not too not too bothered about making sure I've got enough. So I think I'm gonna go for before I go in with this, the I'm gonna go back to the one that we were using. And I'm just going to put like another layer down. Again, I'm trying to control the amount of water I've got on my brush. I am not a fan of buckling. And even with that, I know it wouldn't happen if I stretched my watercolour paper. But when I'm finished a watercolour painting, I, uh, I always stick it under a pile of heavy books for, you know, a day or so. <laughs> just to try and flatten out a little bit. Make it dry quicker. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to our, our, our fuzzy body. But here, I guess I'm not being terribly careful. I don't want to be careful. When I'm doing like photorealistic graphite drawings, that is the time to be precise and careful. Now, this is not the time to be precise and careful. Why would anybody want to do that? Okay, so that's me. I've, I've kind of covered like the bits I want to highlight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop a couple of drops in this palette and do what I did before. And I'm going to suck up some of this Van Dyke and I'm going to plop it in there and I'm just going to mix it up a little. I need to make sure that I've got a clean brush to do this. So giving my little mixing brush a, a wipe. The other brushes that are really good for this sort of thing as well, um, and I tend to prefer the sort of squarer shaped ones, and it's because when you're wiping the paint off into your palette, you know, in, like in here, you can do this and pull it off. And you've got a nice flat edge where it all drips off. I've got cheap brushes from uh, uh, Flying Tiger. I've talked about these a gajillion times before. And these are really, really cheap. But the, these sort of square edged brushes are really good for that. And they, they don't cost much. Um, and they seem to still absorb a reasonable amount of paint or water as well, which is really helpful. So that's that's pretty cool. I don't know if you can hear that. Pip's lying beside me in her usual spot. She's snoring. <laughs> Bless her. Okay, so we'll wait for that to dry again, waiting for that to dry. We can go back to our leaves now. And what we can do is we can add a little bit of darker green to our mixture here. So I've got uh, Hooker's Green Dark and I'm just gonna grab some of that. <laughs> She's dreaming. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you can see that that's a nice rich green colour now. And I'm going to take my smaller brush because I just want to be able to have a little bit more precision with this. And very similarly to what I did on the last page, I'm just going to, almost at random, I'm just going to pick out parts of my leaves and I'm going to add this darker colour to them. Maybe a bit down the stalk here as well. Just to make those a little bit more interesting to look at. Oh, that was way too much water. And it's so simple to do, you know, it's not rocket science, but it makes all the difference, especially when you're in like a colouring book like this. Pop a little bit of that down there now. A little bit in here. Someone had asked me, I can't remember whether it was in an email or on social media but somebody had asked me if I knew of any other colouring books that had you know this sort of uh, you know quality of paper that would be good for water colouring and and I really don't have an answer to that none because I don't like buckling I tend not to want to do things like this in colouring books anyway I would rather have a pdf and print it out on watercolour paper but if anybody does have colouring books that take watercolour paint well or they are actually made of watercolour paper please let us know because I think it's something that quite a lot of people are interested in and that you know I certainly want to find out so if you own something like that or you know of something like that please let us know um it's something that I would quite happily do you know another couple of videos on if we had an actual watercolour colouring book that would be really nice 
I'm just going to leave these ones as they are. No, I'm not. I'm changing my, no, no, I've changed my mind. Yes. I'll just leave them as they are. I think they're so insignificant. You know, they're such a small part of the image that it's not really worthwhile. Okay, I'm going to go back to this sort of diluted Van Dyke colour that I just splodged in here down in the bottom corner and left. And uh, the what I want to do with this is that in its diluted form like this, I just want to put a wash over the top of the body of our moth stroke butterfly type creature because this original colour that we put down is almost like merging into the wings. So by going over everything, I'm still going to be able to keep that definition of the darker colour, but I'm still going to be able to darken down the body. And that's made a difference already. We may have to go again, but we can deal with that once that particular little part has dried. Okay, I'm going to go back to the eyes now. And I have... The number six again because I need a little bit more precision and I'm going to use this phthalo blue and again where the hatching is now make sure you take off as much as possible from your brush because we're going to try and be really conservative with this so I want to go with this sort of slightly darker areas like this just in here and then I'm going to wipe my brush off dip it in a tiny bit of clean water again pull off as much excess as possible and then I'm just going to very gently pull that out a little bit and you can see it just makes it look richer and gives it a bit more depth and I'm going to zoom in slightly just so that you can see a little bit more close up you can see the difference there between the two eyes now and it's something sometimes it's something as small and simple as that that's what makes the difference so it does pay to pay attention to detail sometimes. So I'm going to do the same on this side. The other exciting thing that's happened just recently, which um, I'm just sort of working away on myself, is I bought a digital drawing tablet not that long ago. I have no experience with digital drawing and I have no experience with the likes of Photoshop. So I'm having a little bit of a play about with it myself and until I get the kind of hang of it and then I may do some digital drawing on the channel or some digital colouring, that could be good fun too, we could do that. I'm just having a little feel at his body here, I was going to put another layer on but that's not quite dry. Okay, what I'll do is, well, let's talk about these water droplets. I'm not going to lie, I'm going to cheat a little bit here, just just, just a, like a t tiny, tiny bit. What I'm going to do is the green that I had before, I'm going to water it right down. So I'm going to just flood it with water give it a really good mix and i'm just going to show you on here okay not not a lot of pigment to that at all now but that is what we want and then i'm going to take my small brush and i'm just going to have a little diddle about in it like so and i'm just going to plonk this in on my water droplets i only want the tiniest hint of color i want you to be able to tell that they're green but only just like just a no more. So we'll plonk those in there. And then the, the cheating part that I'm, oh, that one's gone runny. Oh dear, that was too much water. The cheating part I'm referring to is I'm going to take a white gel pen and I'm just going to plonk a little highlight in them once they're dry. And that'll just set them off nicely. She has actually drawn out highlights in some of them. You know, they see these little circles. Uh, so that'll just finish that off nicely. Yeah, really pale so that they stand out a bit more. I could go to town with like trying to get a dark edge and a light edge, but once again, watercolour colouring in, that's not what it's about. Okay, right, body. Yep, that's a bit better. So back we go again with our bigger brush. Pick up some of this. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. You now can't see the, the one that I'm supposed to be using because I zoomed in. My nails are so long that I can't like... I'm struggling to hit the, the little, it's like a slider thing and uh, I can't get to my nails because they're too long. I've still got another week to go before my nail appointment. I've already lost one here and they have grown out so much. It's shellac that's on my nails, but I mean, they're, they're a ridiculous length. So I'm really looking forward to having them all filed and, um, I think I'm actually going to go for a phthalo blue colour next time I get my nails done. I was also thinking about that in the shower too. <laughs> Good grief. Right, anyway. Yes, like, but back to the body of our moth stroke butterfly. Again, just a really quick sweep, a once over everything. 
You don't want to start scrubbing because you're going to lift off some of the colour that's underneath if you're not careful. There we go. Right, I think that'll probably do it for that. The last thing that I want to do now is just tackle the whites of the eyes a little bit. And all I'm going to do is I've got some black here. I'm assuming this is black. It looks black. We'll soon find out. Is I'm just going to reconstitute that. And we'll just let that do its thing. Give it a bit of a mix. Okay, so you can see that that is really watery. There's not a lot of um, paint in there at all. And let's just do a little test run again on our scrap of paper. Oh, you can hardly see it at all. That's perfect. And if I put a little bit more down, you can see there. Um, what I want to do is just in at the corner of the eyes, again, see where these hatched areas are. I just want to put a tiny little bit of grey in there. And it's just to give that eye a bit more sort of depth. It's not something that's going to be immediately obvious when you look at the picture. But it's just going to make those eyes look less flat. You know, nobody's going to look at it and straight away say, oh, you've done grey in the eyes. But what they will see is that the eyes look a bit more rounded or 3D. Because after all, it is, a, it is a ball in there. It is an eyeball. So there's going to be some sort of curvature on it. And that's and that just that tiny little dab. That is actually all that you need. Okay, so what do we think to this, guys? This is looking pretty good. I want to make sure that these pale water droplets are absolutely 100% dry before I start with the gel pen, because otherwise it's just not going to stick. In terms of gel pens, it's down to your preference. You might prefer a Posca. I have got here a, what have I got today? The Hybrid Gel Grip DX, which is one of my more preferred gel pens, and I'm just going to make sure it's running properly on here yep i'm deliberately going on top of the 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 oh, spit it out gem on top of the line mark so that it's quite obvious and i'm just doing a little semicircle and here on these circular ones i will fill in the entire thing again not imperative can't really see it very well in the camera anyway but it makes a difference and there you have it ladies and gentlemen I'm just going to move all this stuff out of the way and you'll be able to see the two side by side now. Making a mess. So if you want to see it side by side with its... And there we go. There are the two pages finished together. And I have to say, I am quite pleased with them. It is a very relaxing pursuit doing something like this. I thoroughly enjoy it and I hope you have enjoyed it too. If you have, you can always give me a thumbs up but don't forget to check out the other videos in the end card which is coming up imminently and once again can i remind you to go and check out the video for the coffee fund and make any suggestions for art or videos you would like to see because we have 65 pounds to spend let's spend it thank you so much for joining me today guys and we shall see you soon back in the cave for another video bye everyone